Ryan Ferguson and Aaron Moriarty join us now. Good morning. Good morning. I think everybody wants to know, Ryan, um, how is it now to be outside after having faced uh, what you went through? Uh, it feels incredible. It's a bit surreal at times, but you know, you just try to move forward in life and each day is a struggle because you've missed out on so much, but we, uh, we have a great family and a great team and we try to figure things out. And, and how do you not be bitter if you're not? It's difficult not to be bitter, but we look at the reality of what happened and we ask for accountability and we move forward and we believe that in the future you know, people will be held accountable for what they did to myself and to my family. And you just really hope that that happens and you live life. Yeah, but you can't put a money value on what happened to you. There is no monetary value to, to 10 years of life. My whole 20s are gone and I can't get that back. But I have a great family, like I was talking about, and we're going to move forward together and, and do great mm -hmm. things together. So. You know, before you came out here, Charlie and I were just talking about how hard it must have been to spend a decade in prison having been wrongly convicted. Um, the idea of losing your freedom is just is, is a terrible, terrible thought. How did you cope? What did you miss the most? I just missed knowing that I had all these opportunities that were gone. Mm -hmm. You know, my whole 20s were gone. And I coped by learning and educating myself every day. I went in as a 19-year-old child, basically, and I realized that I didn't want to come out at that, as that 19-year-old child, whether it was one year or five years or 100 years. I wanted to learn and grow. So and did you do school? And I, yes, I educated myself. And every day I worked out. I took care of my mind and my body. And He wrote I, a book. He wrote yeah, a book on fitness, of all things. In I wanted to show that I had something extra to offer. So I wrote a book on fitness, you know, because I spent a lot of time studying it and learning about it and it's something that I can give back to other people. You know, Aaron, we saw Ryan when he came out after he had been released. We did that story with you and, and he had said, you know, it's easy to get wrongfully convicted, but it takes an army to overturn a conviction. And that's absolutely true. Every case we've ever done of wrongful conviction, number one, it was his parents. I mean, his dad did so much of an investigation afterwards, helping us, um, no question. Then you have press putting us spotlight does not affect the judiciary but certainly the political decisions afterwards and then of course the most important is the attorneys and in this case because you're not automatically entitled to an appellate attorney yeah. uh, Kathleen Zahmer did a pro bono mm -hmm. a lot of work so if you don't have people who are willing to fight for you you're gonna get lost mm -hmm. no question when you would talk to fellow inmates and say hey man I didn't do this would they look at you and say, yeah, yeah, that's what everybody says, or would they want to hear your story? I didn't talk about my case to fellow inmates. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who will talk about their case and say they didn't do it, or a lot of people who say they did do it. I didn't have anything to say to anyone. You know, I just lived my life. I said, we're here. We're all equals. Let's, let's get through whatever we're dealing with together because we're stuck in this environment. But talking about your cases is not wise in prison. I avoided that. What decisions need you make now that you're out? What decisions should I make? Yeah, I mean, what kinds I, of things are you thinking that you have to decide on? Well, I, I look forward to getting a job. It's going to be very difficult. It, it's, it's a struggle to move forward knowing that, you know, I haven't had a proper education. And, you know, whenever people Google my name, obviously it comes up with, you know, the past decade of my life. And then it's very difficult to move forward in that sense, in a professional sense. Mm -hmm. so. Do you have an idea what job you'd like? Uh, I do, uh, definitely real estate, talking to people, educating people about the justice system. I'm going to go probably into law to some degree. And it's going to take time, you know, I've, as I've said, I've missed a decade. But I really feel good about the future. I feel like I can move forward. What happens to Charles Erickson? Charles Erickson needs justice. Uh, the kid, this is another fellow who was convicted. He was. But he's the main accuser here yeah. in this case, yeah. but the same evidence that was kept from Ryan was also kept from Charles Erickson. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of evidence that he, he came to his story because he was fed information by police. It's a sad case, it is. Mm. And, and he needs justice, you know, and it, he doesn't belong in prison. But he, need, he certainly needs help. He needs representation. I think he is going to file an appeal. First, he has to get rid of this guilty plea. He pled guilty before Ryan because, of course, 
he did that. He got a deal to testify against them. So he has to get rid of that guilty plea. And then he's going to have to file suit. His is going to be harder because he, quote unquote, confessed. Well, it's been incredible yeah. to watch 48 Hours and follow your story. Thank and a, you. And a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's great meeting you. Ryan Ferguson, Aaron Moriarty, thank you so much.